Welcome back everyone, I am the Depressed Eeyore and this is Kingdom Death Monster. I gotta do one more for today. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started then. <laughs> Not much to say about that. Um, Endeavor-wise, we do get five, um, thankfully because of um, Tinker, because Tenchi is now officially a Tinker now. So if I can take advantage of that and get a few more Tinkers up and running, that'll be fantastic. But we'll see how things go. Anyway, um, this year... Definitely, we're going to be dealing with a story event as well as, you know, Gorm junk again. Um, let's go ahead and do our settlement event. So roll 1d21. 21! That is Gorm Climates! <laughs> Alright, cool. We got Gorm Climates. So that means we get, we get it a little bit earlier, I guess. Um, it's not too bad. It, you can only have a settlement event happen once. Um, uh, per year, so the Gorm climate that's been listed for year seven won't happen. Instead, it's going to going to happen right now. I'll go ahead and add Gorm climate for next year because, it, of course, it will continue. Now, that is the other. That's the way for Gorm climate to come back after you get rid of it. Um, you can draw it again, and that will start the whole process again. Though, if you got able, if you're able to get rid of Gorm climate. Um, you should have no issues getting rid of it again, because all it would take would be killing a Gorm again. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and roll 1d10. We'll see what we'll get. 3. I'm pretty sure that's going to break our gear, or break uh, an innovation. So let's pull up uh, Gorm Climate. Yep, that's going to... It's either going to destroy all of our resources, or we have to destroy innovation. So let's get rid of Negretto. Which is going to unfortunately drop our survival limit down. We'll put it off to the side for now. So Negretta will go down here for the time being, and uh, that should be it. Okay, so now we can officially go into year seven, which is going to unlock the actual the um, other event that was listed, which was Phoenix Feather. So we'll be able to hunt the Phoenix now, which will actually be pretty beneficial because we have a bunch of characters that are ageless, and we can get them a bunch of free exp uh, a bunch of experience that way. Also, I know I didn't fight the Phoenix last the gameplay uh, last time we went through it. On my la my last game, I didn't uh, fight against the Phoenix. I've gotten a bit more familiar with it, so I might attempt it. We'll see. Big issue, of course, is since the Gorm climate is constantly hitting us, I need to get rid of that first. Anyway, there's the Phoenix. Probably didn't look... Ex uh, and I actually pulled up the wrong thing. It was supposed to be Phoenix Feather. Anyway, here's the Phoenix Feather. Got that stuff going. Uh, Phoenix Feather. A uh, fall, fallen feather fills the settlement with dread. The skies bubble and murmur as a dark presence tears through the atmosphere like a negative lightning bolt, sucking the air and energy from all who gaze upon it. A light rain begins. The survivors turn their eyes up to see a huge iridescent feather slowly floating toward the ground. Their lantern lights reflect, a, reflect strange rainbows off the twisting feather. A primal uh, fear takes root in the f in the settlement. You may not hunt the phoenix, blah blah blah. We can um, break the silence with somebody and they get plus one courage. Um, there is a 10% chance of death, but there's not really any issues with uh, dying for us anymore. Um, everyone's actually rather courageous, except for Yorihime. <laughs> um, I think I'm okay with... Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm I'm nominating Yorohime for this, and I'll roll one d10. Ten. The survivor exclaims. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, plus one courage. There we go. Uh, the survivor exclaims that the fallen feather is the most beautiful and dangerous thing they have ever laid eyes on. Uh, each color runs perfectly into another, and gazing upon it imparts a strange sense of longing. They are convinced that there has never been something so perfect in this world. The survivor greedily hides the feather from the others. They um. They gain the uh, the crazed fighting art and the hoarder disorder and plus one courage from stashing the feather. And all returning survivors get plus two insanity. So Yumiko, you get two insanity. Kongara, you get two insanity. Mera, you get two insanity. And Tenchi gets two insanity. Uh, Yorihime gets another courage. And now she gets crazed. 
the craze fighting art what that does is every perfect hit you get gives you plus one insanity um, and then hoarder uh, what this does is at uh, if you are a returning survivor and you have hoarder you will steal one resource um, from the from your um, loot and you'll get plus if you do that you'll get plus one courage you have to do it though you don't get an option so hoarder's not too bad it's a it's a a very fast way to get all the way to, uh, to max out your courage, but after that, it's essentially you're losing resources. Anyway, um, so that's taken care of. Um, so yeah, Yorohime got some fancy stuff. I, I kind of want to get rid of Hoarder, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, now that is it for the year. Um, so we can go ahead and start doing our usual stuff. So let's go ahead and spend an uh, Endeavor. We'll spend a Monster Hide. Uh, an acid gland and a monster bone and go ahead and do some uh, innovations there are 17 cards in the deck now so let's go ahead and get that going 4 d 17 7 8 12 and 17 17 is records 7 is family 8 is partnership 12 is is it actually citrinitas uh, it is. It is. Um, that is worthwhile. If we if we grab that, um, that gets us a step closer to getting things like Gormite and stuff like that. It also means we don't have to worry about uh, doing the freaking special innovate. Um, the other option, of course, is we can go for records, which um, I mean, the really the only thing I. Well, I mean, getting everyone to get extra sense and things like that could be helpful, but it can be also be overwritten. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab Saturnitas. I We haven't been having very much luck with getting Gorm Brains, and we haven't had the spare resources to make a Gorm Brain. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab this. This does get us plus one survival limit, so we get one back. And just for the sake of it, let's go ahead and put uh, one off the side just so we remember. Uh, for Negretto. Um, there are four uh, Gorm Kimi innovations, and we have two of them. We'll get Negretto back once we fight a Gorm, so that'll be three. So we're just missing one now. Um, now, what you can do with uh, Citrinitas, or Citr yeah, Citrinitas, is you can. Um, <laughs> it's three endeavors. You can only do it uh, once per year. Returning survivors can get minus one, uh, minus one permanent evasion, which sucks. Um, or you can get Elixir of Wholeness, which is returning survivors may remove one broken severe injury. Honestly, it's not worthwhile because, honestly, most broken um, injuries you can fix with bed, and it's cheaper. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Anyway, um, we do get to add the last um, Gorm, the Gorm Chemist uh, innovation to the deck. If we can get that last one, I will begin... I mean, at this point, we have just... Well... After we fight the Gorm, we'll have ex enough um, Gorm Kimmy innovations to actually attempt to get Gormite. But I'm definitely going to wait until we officially get everything we need. Um, so where is it? It's expansion. Uh, we need Rebetto. Rebetto's the last one, which... Yeah, it's, uh... it's a bit crazy. So we can go ahead and grab Roberto, get that added to the deck. This is the last of the uh, Gorm Kimmy. All right. So the good news is we got that out of the way, which will hopefully save us some trouble in the future. I would like to go ahead and get a Gorm Brain so I can get that last one and then be good to go. Anyway, um, and also I don't mind grabbing it because everything else was not that useful. We don't need family. Partnership is useless. Um, and records is probably the best of the bunch, but we really don't need it. All right, so that leaves us with four endeavors. Um, we have enough bone to, um, we have one hide. Now, something we definitely need to be aware of is next year's bone, which year after that is, um, Kingsman. So we need to get we need to get prepared for that. We need shields, and we don't have any. <laughs> In fact, we have had pretty much no luck on getting armor completed at all. 
Um, it's actually been rather awful. So yeah, we have one monster hide, which isn't enough to make a shield anyway. So I guess I'm going to focus on... Actually, um, if we want to, we can try making a Gorm Brain. That is an option. Um, to do that, we have to use Albedo. It'll take two endeavors, and um, yeah, I can spend two. And as long I have a tw there's a twenty percent chance I lose weapon proficiency, but it doesn't really matter because you will still have mastery no matter what. So yeah, I think we can go for that. If we go for that, I can just get rid of it, uh, get the last one, and be good to go. It takes four organs, though, which is a pain. Yep. All right. So yeah, let's uh, let's go for it. I'm gonna roll this is where I roll a one or a two, so let's just go ahead and knock it out of the way. Four. Okay, so elixir of concentration, spend four organs and to gain one gorm brain uh gorm resource. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of the acid gland, the stout kidney, and the stout heart, as well as the active thyroid. Um Well, do we Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of the active thyroid. And now this is going to give us a Gorm Brain, which if you recall, we can use it with um, the special innovation here to get the next Gorm Kimmy innovation. So Strange Resource and Gorm Brain. So I'm going to spin the Gorm Brain we just got along with a, a fresh Acanthus because that is a Strange Resource. Yep, it is a Strange Resource. So... All we need to do is first we need to spend two innovations or two endeavors that we use for the elixir and then one for the innovation and there you go. We just got ourselves Rebetto. Alright, so after we fight the Gorm, we'll have all four. And yay, we can fit everything in two rows again. Alright. Um that did eat up a lot of resources unfortunately, but it we can now get the full benefit of the Gorm Chemist um, come next year. So uh, I'll spend the fresh Acanthus to go ahead and get ourselves the um, one more dried Acanthus. And we'll give it to her that, when the time comes. Uh, next, we need to go ahead and get ourselves some scrap swords. So let's go ahead and do that. We need two bone and a scrap. So. We'll just go with uh, the dense bone and the stout vertebrae and a broken lantern. And with that, we can get ourselves a scrap sword. So once again, we now have four weapons. With only one of them being frail. And hey, look, Kangara can have a weapon now. All right. Um, this leaves us with one innovation or one endeavor left. Uh, let's go ahead and use that to... Um, Let's use it for Kongara. We'll roll a 1d10 for her. Uh, 8, unfortunately, is an intimacy, so nothing happens. All right, so that takes care of all of that. Um, not much else for us to do, unfortunately. Um, okay. So next, we need to prepare for the next hunt. Now, the key thing here is we need to take Kongara with us, because Kongara is deaf, and she's sane. Um, and next, and now we have to actually pick people to risk for the Bone Witch. So I'm going to actually bring in Yorihime for this, because she, she might as well. Um, she's probably going to get end up getting Matchmaker, but that's okay. Um, speaking of Matchmaker, that is Yomu, actually. Kongara will neck the level, that's fine. Momiji... I'm, uh, yeah, let's, well, I don't want to do Yomu. Yomu has three strength. That's amazing. Um, 
let's uh we'll take Momiji. That, that's without saying. Uh, we're taking Kongara. The question is: is out of the four other characters, which one do I am I willing to su uh, have suffer a debuff? All of them are actually pretty good, so there's not much I can say about this. I think it's going to have to be Mera. So Mera, sorry to say, you're going to have to um, bite the bullet for this one. Alright, so at least this time we have a different team. So let's go ahead and get uh, Yorihime in here, Kangara, Mera, and Momiji. There you go. So yeah, this is all just to get prepared for the uh, the Bone Witch. Um, the way the Bone Witch works is returning survivors gets three insanity as long if they are um, not deaf. Uh, Kangara is sane and deaf, so that means she won't have to actually participate in it. Um... I could actually take Tenchi, and she can, you know, do Tinker stuff to get additional endeavors. I'm... I think we're okay with... I think we're okay, though. Yeah, we'll be fine. Well, with this, we'll at least have one endeavor coming back, which we can use for innovations. Alright, so Kangara, Mera, Yorihime, and Momiji. Fortunately, we don't have anyone that has um, three understanding now, but that's okay. All right, let's uh, let's get started. So, um, there's not much else to say. So, one d seven. Oh, actually, departing stuff. Sorry. Um, your teammate's gonna have two stats and everything. Um, and her survival is going to be maxed out at 6. Kongara will be maxed out at 6 and have her usual armor. Uh, Mara is doing her thing still. Yep, Mara's still doing her thing, so she's fine. Uh, Momiji is actually going to have uh, 3 armor in the head, 2 in the arms, 3 in the waist. And she's going to actually get 2 insanity. Um, she will also get... She'll get two departing from the two, two departing survival from Drydacanthus and four from depart uh, from innovations. So that is maxed out as well. So cool. We have six uh, survival again and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Um, I there's been some mention about how you know level two and level three monsters aren't worth it. Um, and I kind of agree in some ways, um, but I still intend to eventually go after a level 2 Gorm just to kind of show off um, what sort of ac extra stuff happens with it, because it does have some um, some quirks about it. But until then, let's go ahead and roll 1d7 and uh, get started. 1. In fact, that was... You know, I swear, if I get the exact same rolls as I did before, I'm going to get... I'm, I'm gonna get a little annoyed. Uh, all right, so one d ten. It's flatter earth. We already we've gone through this before. Three. Um, roll two random hunt events before continuing to the next hunt board space. All right, so one d one hundred thirty three. We've had thirty three before as well. Oh, it's down here. It whispers your name. Um, We've done this before. Um, Kangara is actually, funny enough, she is sane. <laughs> she is, I think, the only person that is sane out of the group. Yeah, she is the only sane person. That's amazing. 
So what's going to happen with that is um, plus if the survivor is not insane, plus one understanding. It's it's just this it's the stone faces whispering your name again. So Kangara gets one understanding, which gives her explore and her insight. I'll go ahead and roll for the insight first before we go to the next thing. It is a unfortunately a one. So for insight, she gets. You dream before you toiling silently a strange creature with the imprint of a human face sculpts uh, stone faces into the ground. You meet its concave gaze and wake. Um, Explore is pretty good. It's uh, You get plus two on your investigate uh, checks. And the roll we got was we can reroll one hunt event result of this hunt phase. So we will keep that to the side for now. Um, we do need to do one more hunt event. So let's go ahead and do that before we can continue. Love Lorne Rock. Uh, survivors pass a ring of stones with an unassuming boulder at the center. Each survivor must roll 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor, randomized and ties, becomes a straggler. Alright, so somebody's going to get the stupid rock. Alright. Um, we'll go in order by the tabs on the top. So I'll roll 4d10. Actually, I'll roll them one at a time because I think I have some people that have um, prepared. Uh, yes, Kongara is prepared so she can add her hunt XP to this. So, Yorahime first. Kongara next. Uh, she gets plus uh, five. Okay. And then Mera. And then Momiji. Okay, Mera gets a Lovelorn Rock, which we'll copy and uh, add to her gear grid. There you go. She's stuck with it. All right. Not much we can do about that. In fact, there's no way to get rid of it. Like, it is with Mara for her, the rest of her life, as far as I know. So that's a uh, that's annoying. Okay. Uh, so record this on the survivor sheet. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll just do that too. So I'll do that right now. Mara. Rock. Okay. Actually. Take out the explanation mark. I don't want to accidentally trigger some stupid URL nonsense. All right, let's. Uh, that's taken care. Okay, so now we can actually go to the next freaking hunt event. Um, hunt space. So one d seven. Three. Three is Horizon of Bones. The darkness ahead is. Um, filled with steady flashes of green light, enormous piles of jagged bones forebodingly line the horizon in an unbroken line, and human mournful laughter echoes through the air. If any survivor has five hunt XP, or high, five or higher hunt XP and three plus courage, you may press forward, fearfully sneaking through the bone wall. All survivors gain plus one courage. Otherwise, you have to do a hunt event. Uh, Kangara has seven courage and five XP. Congratulations. So all survivors gain plus one courage, which is great. This triggers Yorahime's bold and gives her prepared. Plus one courage. Plus one courage. Plus one courage. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and roll 1d10 for her bold. Two, unfortunately. That's, I think she gets like a plus token or not some, some junk like that. But it's better than nothing. Um, plus one speed token for next showdown. So Yorahime gets plus one speed for this upcoming battle. All right, so cool. Horizon Bones is actually very helpful for us. Good thing we brought Kangara. Actually, I mean, we could have brought anyone. They would have, any of the other three characters would have triggered it as well. Anyway, next is Momiji. Um, let's bring her to the front so she's not behind the card. Sorry, I should be zoomed in for this. Anyway, we got to do herb gathering again, so we're just going to go ahead and do the usual stuff. Uh, 2d10. All right, 9, and then I'm just going to roll a bunch of 1d10s. 7, 2, 7, so 14, 16, 25. Pretty sure that's fine. Yeah, 
Russicanthus. That's actually pretty useful, just being able to get fresh canthus every hunt. I mean, I could have gone for um, the the bigger hunt event, since I can re-roll, but no point in risking that junk. It, it ain't worth it right now. Anyway, um, next is going to be the random hunt event, um, but before we do that, we are going to go ahead and trigger... Uh, main hunter, or not the main hunter, but the uh, the reverberating lantern. Um, I'm going to have nobody. Everyone's just going to rest, but they're maxed out on survival. I'm going to go ahead and trigger storytelling and go ahead and roll one d10. Four, which is unfortunately nothing special. But oh, actually, this is a story event. So let me check this again. Reroll one hunt event result. Yeah, so I can't reroll this. So what ended up happening is everyone gets plus one survival. Oh well. Uh, next is going to be a random hunt event. This one we can mess around with. Uh, 90. Load, load, load. 90. Light on the horizon. Um... Okay, so this is the one where you get to re-roll your next hunt event. Um, if everyone's insane, though, they get pushed back um, from the quarry. But that doesn't matter to us, because we are going to be fighting next round. So let's go ahead and get the, the Gorm ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, all of this is taken care of. Now this time the Gorm will actually be able to go first. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and roll 2d21, see what we get. 14 and 20. 14 is a giant stone face and 20 is a toppler, toppler pillar. All right, well, I have to put them on the board, so let's go ahead and do that. The pillar, that's already been set up. We can put that right there, whatever. Okay, done. We don't even use them, so. So we'll just stick with what we know. All right. So we'll set up Momiji down here. Uh, Yorahime can be set up here. You can be set up there. Why did I take Mara? Oh wait, I do have Mara. Okay, I'm 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 blanking out. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. We can work with this. Uh. Yeah, one way or the other, you're just gonna end up walking into it. And we'll keep uh, Kongara out of sight, because she doesn't really need to do anything for this fight. Okay, uh, Monster goes first. Body check, random survivor in range. Okay, so line of sight doesn't matter. Okay, uh, we'll go 1d4. One is Kangara, two is Mera, three is Yorahime, four is Momiji. So essentially just descending. One, Kangara. Uh, does the Tobble Pillar break? It does not. Alright. Boop, 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 boop. Sorry about that. Alright. So, one attack, target suffers bash, and all that nonsense. Okay, good to know. So, 1d10, it's a hit, uh, Kangara will just dodge. There we go. And then she's going to get out of there. So, it is our turn. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to 
I'm going to go ahead and have your teammate dash. She keeps her point. One, two, three, four, five. Then she's going to move there and attack. Actually, before I do that, one, two, three, four, five. There you go. Gungar is out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make four attacks. Um, right now, Yorahime has plus one speed. So that's taken care of. Also, we don't need this insight anymore because we didn't get any hunt events that were rollable. All right. So 4010 hits on fours. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Uh, that is only one hit. Let's go ahead and pull, th pull that up. Uh, Mammoth Hindgut, let's just roll the, let's just, let's just get this out of the way. 1d10 plus 4, um, 3 for the um, weapon and 1 for your Mace Mastery. That's pretty much it. That's a critical hit to the Hindgut. Uh, healthy Vomit. Survivors in the Vomit Zone uh, heal all injury levels at one hit location of their choice. So, better than nothing. Alright. Next, I'm going to go ahead and have her surge, so I'll roll 1d10 for that. She keeps her point. Then she's going to roll a bunch of attacks. Hits three times this time. One, two, three. We'll go ahead and roll for the wound first. Uh, that is a regular wound. I will apply it to. I will apply it to the fluorescent lure because that doesn't have a crit. I'll go for the hand next. That's a wound. And next we'll go for the balls, which actually gets uh, additional two strength. That's a crit to the balls. No surprise there. All right, so she's gonna get mammoth hunting for free, but. Now the now the uh, mammoth is pissed. So Yorihime gets mammoth hunting. There you go. And let's see, that was three wounds, so there should be a total of four cards here. So there's the fourth card. There you go. And that is it for that. She can't move anywhere, unfortunately. Uh, Mara, how are you doing? Mammoth hunting, all that nonsense. You can get set up there. One, two, three, four, five. And that is it for the round. I'm going to go ahead and let the mammoth have his turn. Rear up. When this card is drawn face down, the Gorm laboriously lifts its front legs and ends its turn. All survivors adjacent to the monster are knocked down. While this card is in play, the Gorm has plus five toughness tokens. Um, when this uh, when this card is drawn face up, the Gorm crashes down. All adjacent survivors suffer a random severe injury and gain the megalophobia disorder. Okay. I am not sure exactly what happens with duration cards when you wound somebody. So I'm going to go check that real quick. I know you can't manipulate it with like um, the rawhide headband or anything like that. Uh, that doesn't tell me anything. All right, I'll look up monsters. Sorry about this. Just need to confirm this stuff. Okay, if we wound him, it will um, remove the duration card. But yeah. The only thing that can manipulate a duration card is wounding, which is why it's dangerous with the fighting the hand, for example. So one second, this did all adjacent survivors are knocked down. So this um, knocked down Yorohime. It's now our turn. We definitely need to make sure we get rid of that card. So that is our main priority. Um, Kangara will shout up. 
uh, Yorihime. Because I'm pretty sure she can still do that. Let me check death real quick. All sorts of new stuff happening today. Alright, death, uh, you won't hear it coming. Okay, yeah, you can still encourage. You just can't be encouraged. Okay, so she'll be encouraged. I think I already spent the point. Yes, I did. Alright, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and have Yorihime attack. So, four attacks. 4d10. Uh, one perfect hit, which does trigger crazed. So, plus one insanity. And then two regular hits. So, three hits in total. One. Two. Trap. Nope, no trap. Okay, so this is going to be 1d10. It was originally 1d10 plus four. Now it's 1d10 plus five because of mammoth hunting. And then plus nine because of the perfect hit. So 1d10 plus 9, that is a critical hit. Let's. Where do we want to apply it? We can get a random resource, random resource and plus 1 courage, or a stout kidney. Uh, let's go for the fangs, get ourselves a plus 1 courage and a random resource. And this will put rear up, on, um, get, make it discard. So, oh wait. Let's take that back. Remember, this thing has plus 5 toughness tokens. Um, that makes its toughness 13, just in reference. Um, and we got 17, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, if we did, if we hadn't gotten that perfect hit, it would have been... We would have had to roll essentially an 8 or higher, so essentially what we just rolled. So uh, yeah, we would have been fine either way. Also, there's locations that where we got plus two strength, so all good. All right, we're good to go. So I just wanted to make sure. I mean, it was a crit anyway, so it would have auto wound, but just wanted to point that out. It did have plus five toughness tokens. Anyway, um, we do get a 1d21. Eight. So put uh, eight there. And 8 gets us a Mammoth Hand, an enormous leathery glove. It counts as a bone, hide, and organ, so it's a practically a wild card. This is our first time getting one, and we're like years and seven now. But we definitely needed it. All right, so we got that. Um, we still have other locations. We still have two more hits to do. And we have to pick the locations for them. So let's go for a distended gut first. Oh, also, uh, Yorihime did get plus one courage. So note that. All right, so 1d10 plus, uh, it's still plus nine. So 1d10 plus nine on the non wound re reaction thing. That is a critical hit to the distended gut, which gets us a stout uh, kidney. There we go. So this is why I'm trying to just let my luck characters just do this, is so we can get all these resources out of them. We should have done been doing that all game, but I'm an idiot, so that's okay. Um, next is the mammoth, mammoth rump, so we'll probably just get a regular hit here. Yep, that's a regular wound. And it's going to cause it to uh, retch, which is just going to make it go back two steps and not hit any hit anything. All right, cool. We got that going. Also, for Stout Kidney, I will note that as uh, 19, since it's been removed from the deck. All right, uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and Surge. I uh, do not keep the point. And then I'll make four attacks. 4d10, uh, perfect hit, so that does trigger Crazed. And then... Um, two regular hits. So three hits again. One, two, uh, three. So once again, it's going to be a 1d10 plus nine. Uh, that is a regular wound. I will apply it to the wrinkled elbow. There you go. Next, I will go for the bloated face. That is a fail to the bloated face. And then I'll go ahead and do it, uh, attack the spine. 
That is a wound to the spine. Okay, and that is pretty much it. Um, I could have moved, but I've already I already ended my action, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, it is the monster's turn. Monster is just going to uh, actually. I know that there's one card left, which is body check. So what I'm going to go ahead and do for that is try to get out of range. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll have uh, Momiji dash. One, two, three, four, five. And then Mara's going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then dash. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Uh, that means I think everyone's out of range now. Yep. So that means rand it'll be a random allocation, but there's only one person to target. So monster's turn. A monster's going to do body check. Attack once on uh, Yorihime. It hits. I'm just going to have her dodge, and I'll see if she keeps the point. She does not. All right. And it's now uh, Yorihime's turn. So Yorihime's going to go right over here and attack uh, a bunch of times. 40-10. Uh, four hits, one of them perfect, so she does trigger crazed. Also, I keep forgetting about purpose. What does that even do? Oh, okay, that just prevents you from getting... It can protect you from getting bleed tokens. Or a lethal number of bleed tokens. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw the trap, because that's coming. One, two, three, four. Wow, no trap. Alright, so let's go ahead and roll. Uh, we did get a perfect hit again, so uh, 1d10 plus 9. That's a regular wound. I will apply it to... Uh, we will apply it to the bulging eye. There we go. Next wound will be a kill. I will go for the backstrap next. Yeah, backstrap next. That's a crit to the backstrap. So we do get the jiggling lard, um, and I'm not going to eat it. And uh, that is a kill, so jiggling lard. which I'll note as a 6. So there you go. Not a bad run. So yeah, if you can keep control of the fight like this and you have things like Surge, just have your luck, have your des designated critter, uh, crit character handle all the wounds. I really wish I did that, you know, sooner. <laughs> Anyway, um, experience. Your teammate gains uh, experience. Your uh, Kongara levels. Mara gets experience. Momiji gets experience. Um, I'll go ahead and roll for Kongara's level up. Seventeen, which I'm pretty sure is a fighting art. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, but it's not that bad. But yeah, we do get a random fighting art at level two. Um, so that's a 1d47. One. All right. That I believe that's ambidexterity. Uh, yep, ambidextrous. All me melee weapons in your gear are uh, gear grid are paired. Ambidextrous but uh, cannot be used if there are any shields, two-handed, or heavy gear in your gear grid. So congratulations, Mara. Um, now I do have to replace a um, fighting art. I think I'll go ahead and get rid of Orator of Death. Well, Orator. Yeah, I'm. 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 My characters are bonkers enough. Let's go ahead and just get amb ambidextrous instead. All right. Uh, next, we need to do um, loot. So, 40, 21 for mammoth stuff. Uh, any of those duplicates? 
Surprisingly, no. None of them are duplicates. So let's go ahead and knock those out. Uh, we got a dense bone. Five is a handed skull. Seven is a jiggling lard. And 18 is a stout hide. So dense bone. Go and stout hide. It's not too bad. We at least got some hides, which we desperately needed. Um, next, regular loot. Uh, re rolling duplicates. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. Blinking out for a second. Uh, 10 is Monster Hide. Thirteen is a monster hide, as is fifteen. And then the other one was seventeen, which is a monster organ. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. We definitely have a lot of um, hide now, which is this is enough to make some nice things. Uh, we'll set this off to the side for innovating. Got a bunch of fancy things here. Just trying to get it set, uh, sorted out. Okay, uh, with what we have, we might be able to attempt to get some Gormites. Which would be awesome, because that means we can wreck some shit with some uh, super weapons. Though we still have to roll pretty high on 5d10 to actually get it working. Oh, speaking of, we need to get Negretto back. Negretto, you're back. So as long as we don't break our freaking Negretto, we can attempt to uh, do some stuff. Also, our max survival is now 7. Anyway, um, just seeing what we got. So yeah, we have a bunch of hide. A whole lot of hide, in fact. We've got some organs that could be also hides. So the thing we're really missing is um, some bone, but we really don't need that much bone. If we get the freaking black sword or whatever it's called, uh, we'll be good to go. Uh, yeah, uh, with this, we should be able to get... Um, at least uh, two shields made, among other things. So yeah, two shields, um, and then next year we can hopefully make another one. All right, well, I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was uh, Kingdom Death Monster. See you guys later. Hey guys, I uh, forgot one thing. Um, we do have Yorohime with us. Uh, she's obviously going to skip the next hunt because it's secretive, but she also has Hoarder, which is going to give her plus one courage, and we have to get rid of one resource. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of... What do I want to get rid of? Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Fresh Acanthus, because I actually want everything else that's here. So just wanted to clarify that, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.